Did you know that Thomas Edison, the so-called genius inventor, had an uncanny knack for not inventing everything he's credited for? Yes, you heard it right. Our dear Edison had a cheeky little habit of taking credit for certain inventions that, well, weren't exactly his brain children. Now, don't get me wrong. Edison was indeed a prolific inventor with more than 1,000 patents to his name. His contributions to the fields of electricity and telecommunications are nothing short of revolutionary. He's the man we thank for commercial electricity for crying out loud. But as it turns out, some of those shiny innovations attributed to him were actually the brainchildren of other bright minds. Picture this, a world where Edison is known not just as the great inventor, but also as the great borrower. Intriguing, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying he was a swindler or a con artist. No, he was more of an opportunist, a savvy businessman who knew how to seize an idea and turn it into a profitable venture. After all, it's not stealing if it's done in the name of progress, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. Which inventions are we talking about here? Well, buckle your seatbelts, because we're going to delve into eight of Edison's most famous inventions that weren't exactly his. We're talking about the electric chair, the video camera, the electric light bulb, the record player, the electric battery, x-rays, wax paper, and yes, even the telegraph. Yes, dear friends, these eight inventions, as iconic and as paradigm-shifting as they are, weren't the sole creations of our dear Thomas. Instead, they were the products of other brilliant minds that were, unfortunately, overshadowed by Edison's towering reputation and savvy marketing skills. So buckle up, folks, as we delve into the curious case of Edison's inventions. Prepare for a journey through time that's going to shock you, enlighten you, and spin you around in ways you never thought possible. And remember, in the world of invention and innovation, things aren't always as they seem. Here's a shocking revelation. Edison didn't invent the electric chair. Now, I assure you, this is no attempt at sparking controversy, but rather, it's the shocking truth. This grim contraption was actually the brainchild of Alfred P. Southwick, a dentist by profession. Southwick was inspired, if that's the right word, by an unfortunate incident in which a man died instantly after accidentally touching a live electric generator. Southwick concluded that electricity could be a quick and more humane method of execution, replacing the gruesome methods of the time. Enter Thomas Edison. Now, Edison was no fan of alternating current or AC pioneered by his rival, Nikola Tesla. He believed it to be dangerous and campaigned for its disuse. So when Southwick approached Edison for his expertise on the electric chair, Edison saw an opportunity. By associating AC with death, he hoped to discredit Tesla's work. He assisted Southwick not as the inventor, but as a consultant suggesting the use of AC for the chair. The first execution using the electric chair was carried out in 1890 and it was, ironically, a shocking disaster. The execution was far from swift and humane and the incident served to tarnish Edison's reputation rather than damage Tesla's. So there you have it, Edison, the man of light, also had a dark side, wouldn't you agree? Lights, camera, action. Well, maybe not so much action for Edison. Now, let's roll into the controversy surrounding the video camera. It's a fascinating tale of cinematic intrigue where the spotlight shines not on Edison, but on a Frenchman named Louis Le Prince. Picture this, the year is 1888. Le Prince, a creative genius, crafts a single lens camera that captures moving images, marking the birth of motion pictures. Yet the credits roll too soon for Le Prince. Tragically, he vanishes under mysterious circumstances in 1890, and with him, his claim to the invention. Enter Thomas Edison, stage right. The American inventor, never one to miss an opportunity, steps into the limelight. He develops his own version of a movie camera, the Kinetograph, in 1891. With Le Prince out of the picture, Edison seizes the moment and declares himself the father of motion pictures. The world applauds, the curtain falls, and history is written. But let's not forget the unsung hero of our story. Despite his disappearance, Le Prince's pioneering work laid the foundation for the film industry we know today. His single-lens camera was the real star of the show, long before Edison's kinetograph stole the scene. So, the next time you're munching popcorn at the movies, spare a thought for Louis Le Prince. His vision set the stage for the magic of cinema, while Edison merely called action. Looks like Edison was more of a director than an inventor in this case. Edison's brightest idea, the light bulb, wasn't really his bright idea at all. Now, there's a turn of the switch for you. 
Let's shed some light on this dim misconception. Long before Edison basked in the glow of electric light, two gentlemen had already sparked the idea. Sir Hiram Maxim, an American-born British inventor, and Sir Joseph Swan, an English physicist and chemist, were the true luminaries behind this invention. Maxim, a prolific inventor with over 200 patents to his name, was the first to develop a practical and long-lasting electric light bulb. However, his invention was overshadowed by the limelight hogging Edison. On the other side of the pond, Swan was independently tinkering away, and in 1878 he demonstrated a working light bulb a year before Edison. His version used carbonized paper filaments in an evacuated glass bulb. It was Swan's light that first brightened homes in England, not Edison. So, how did Edison end up with the patent, you ask? Well, it's quite simple. He was a master marketer and promoter. Edison didn't invent the electric light bulb, he perfected it. He improved upon Swan and Maxim's designs, creating a bulb that was more practical, durable and suitable for mass production. His bulb used a better filament material and a more effective vacuum process, but the plot thickens. Swan sued Edison for patent infringement and won. In a twist of fate, or perhaps shrewd business acumen, Edison and Swan joined forces, forming the Edison and Amp Swan United Electric Light Company. This merger allowed Edison to dodge the patent dispute and continue to bask in the glow of the light bulb's success. The company even had a cheeky nickname, Edis One. So the next time you flick a switch, remember it wasn't Edison who first lit up the world. It was Sir Hiram Maxim and Sir Joseph Swan, the true inventors of the electric light bulb. So Edison wasn't the brightest bulb in the box after all. Edison might have been record-breaking, but he didn't break any records in inventing the record player. Hold your phonographs, folks. While Thomas Edison indeed invented the phonograph, it is a common misconception that he invented the record player. The credit for this melodious invention goes to a certain gentleman by the name of Emil Berliner. Berliner was a German-born American inventor who, in the late 19th century, developed a method for reproducing sound that was far superior to Edison's phonograph. His creation, the gramophone, or as we know it today, the record player. Edison, ever the opportunist, saw this new invention as a threat to his phonograph and decided to do what he did best, take credit. He claimed that Berliner's gramophone was merely an improved version of his phonograph and began marketing it as his own. And just like that, Edison was spinning Berliner's records as well as spinning a web of lies. Berliner, however, was not one to back down. He fought Edison in the court of public opinion and eventually in actual courtrooms. The battle was tough, but Berliner emerged victorious with his gramophone acknowledged as a unique and separate invention. This tale of the record player is a reminder that history, much like a record, can sometimes skip and repeat itself. And in this case, it repeated the age-old story of a big name overshadowing a lesser-known inventor. Edison spinning records and spinning lies, quite the combo. Edison's claim to the electric battery invention was more of a static than a shock. Now, imagine a world without batteries. No mobile phones, no laptops, no electric cars. You'd have to wind your watch every day and forget about taking that torch camping. The electric battery, an invention so integral to our daily lives, was not in fact the brainchild of our dear friend Thomas Edison. The electric battery was actually the handiwork of an Italian physicist named Alessandro Volta. Born in the 18th century, Volta was a man of many talents, but his most enduring contribution was the invention of the voltaic pile in the year 1800. This was the first ever electric battery capable of producing a steady electric current. But hold your horses, what about Edison? Well, Edison did indeed work on batteries, but his contribution was merely an improvement on existing technology. He developed an alkaline storage battery around the turn of the 20th century. While this was an important advancement, it was far from the original invention of the electric battery. So while Edison's batteries may have powered countless devices and automobiles, they were built on the foundation laid by Alessandro Volta. And just as a battery needs both a positive and negative to function, so too does the history of invention need both the originators and the improvers. Seems like Edison's battery ran out of original ideas. Edison's claim to the invention of X-rays is as transparent as the images they produce. Let's delve into this fascinating tale, shall we? X-rays, those invisible rays that allow us to peer into the inner workings of the human body, weren't an Edison original. Shocking, I know, the true inventor of X-rays was a German physicist named Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen.
In 1895, Röntgen was experimenting with cathode rays when he noticed a fluorescent glow. The intriguing part was that this glow was coming from a location away from the perceived influence of the cathode rays. What could be causing this glow? Röntgen was curious and his curiosity led him to discover X-rays, a form of electromagnetic radiation. Now let's swivel back to our friend Thomas Edison. Well, he was, as always, quick to jump on the bandwagon. Edison claimed that he had been working on similar experiments and that he too had discovered X-rays. However, the timeline and documentation heavily favor Röntgen's claim. Edison's involvement with X-rays wasn't entirely without merit. He did contribute to its development, particularly in the realm of medical imaging. But the invention itself, that was Röntgen's baby. So, while Edison may have helped to make X-rays more practical for medical use, the credit for their discovery rightly belongs to Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen. Edison sure had a knack for seeing through other people's ideas, didn't he? Edison's claim to the telegraph invention was more of a miscommunication. Indeed, the story of the telegraph is a tale of crossed wires with the true inventor, Samuel Morse, tapping out a message that got lost in translation. Let's take a step back in time to the early 19th century. The world was in the grip of the Industrial Revolution and communication was ripe for a revolution of its own. Enter Samuel Morse, a man with a vision for a device that could send messages across vast distances in mere moments. Morse's telegraph, with its ingenious code of dots and dashes, transformed communication, shrinking the world in a way never seen before. But how did Thomas Edison, a man born years after the telegraph's invention, come to claim this revolutionary device as his own? It's a bit like claiming you invented the wheel because you put fancy rims on your car. Edison did make some improvements to the telegraph system, but the invention itself was Morse's brainchild. You see, Edison was an astute businessman. He knew the value of a good idea, and he wasn't above taking credit where credit wasn't due. His claim to the telegraph invention was really a claim to the improvements he made to Morse's original design. In the end, the telegraph is a classic case of a message misdelivered, with Edison playing the part of the faulty receiver. So, Edison was more of a receiver than a transmitter of original ideas. So there you have it. Edison, the man who lit up our world, had a few sparks of his own, but not quite as many as we thought. It turns out that our dear friend Thomas was more of a crafty businessman than a lone genius, capitalizing on the brilliance of others while adding his own touch of marketing magic. From the electric chair to the video camera, the light bulb to the record player, the electric battery to x-rays, waxed paper and the telegraph, Mr. Edison seemed to have a knack for being in the right place at the right time, with the right patent application in hand. But let's not be too harsh, after all, he did help bring these inventions into the limelight, even if he wasn't their true father. Remember folks, history isn't always as it seems. So, if you enjoyed debunking Edison's myths with us, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more history gone wrong. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning.